head, you know, what modern atheistic existentialism says is we're a cosmic accident and damn lucky to be here, and any meaning you get out of the situation, you're simply conferring. Uh, I say no. By looking deeply into the structure of nature, we can discover that novelty is what nature produces and conserves, and if that represents a universal value system, then the human world as we find it today with our technologies and our complex societies represents the greatest novelty so far achieved. And so suddenly you have a basis for an ethic. That which uh, advances novelty is good. That which retards it is, uh, is to be looked at very carefully. Well, all right, let me stop you right there. One okay. of the first things that you said when we got on the air this morning was that you had a 128 baud connection from your mountaintop secret location. Right. Okay. Um, as we are discussing your theory, uh, which is fascinating, of novelty, um, I'm taken to ask you about a quote, actually, um, of several pages written by Michael Crichton. And I know you know who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, with reference to the Internet, it is Michael Crichton's contention that the Internet, which one might consider to be novelty, um, uh, exemplified. In uh, uh, Yeah, indeed. Is going to result uh, not in uh, more novelty, but in fact in um, a slowing of the, the process of evolution, or novelty as you, you see it, uh, because there will be a commonality. There will not be innovation. There will not be um, entrepreneurship. There will be ten main ideas in America and Hong Kong and Moscow and London and so forth. Um, how would you address that? Well, I'm astonished. I hardly know what he's talking about. I, let me give you my take on oh, Okay, I, I, let me rephrase it. He's saying the Internet will stifle diversity and that uh, diversity is critical to uh, advancement. Well, what I see happening, and I spend hours and hours a day on the Internet, is I believe it's the great force empowering uh, marginal and minority points of view uh, to come along in centuries. In other words, uh, before the Internet, the great establishment ideas already had the machinery of media to communicate their position. True. Uh, what has happened is that the common man has gotten uh, into the game with technology that I really don't think was ever intended to fall into. Oh, you, uh, bet, you bet it wasn't. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know what Crichton is talking about. Uh, I believe what the Internet is doing is uh, dissolving boundaries uh, between people's idea systems, classes, and factions, and we're getting a much richer evolutionary interplay among ideas and this sort of thing. So uh, I see it as uh, a very fertile place with a lot of mutation going on uh, in hardware, in how people view it, ideologies, this sort of thing. Uh, I just don't know where he's coming from. With well, uh, I might I might expand on it this way. Uh, he suggests, for example, that if you were to take uh, an otherwise deserted or barren desert island and you were to put a species upon it, that species, because there are so few of them, uh, would by necessity be very innovative, would change very quickly in trying to adapt and live and stay alive, uh, on the other hand, if you put many, many creatures on that island, that process would be far slower. And he uses that as a parallel to the Internet. I'm not sure that I agree with it either. I just found it an interesting take uh, on the soci sociological uh, implications of the Internet. Well, you see, when people talk about the Internet, they're usually talking about the Internet that was because it's moving so quickly. For example, I oh, just yes. read a paper by a guy named Alexander Cheslenko out at the Media Lab at MIT, and he's talking about plug-ins 
that will translate websites of one language into another. <laughs> well, now imagine when people can put up websites in Telugu, Witoto, Russian, French, you name it, and you can automatically slide into those websites and uh, see what's going on. You're, you're describing uh, Crichton's nightmare and your... Um uh, best dream, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing about technology. It uh, tends to polarize people. Uh, let me make one point here uh, before we leave this time thing. I said I'd identified a tendency in the universe which science had missed, which was to conserve novelty. And then you asked about the Internet, mm -hmm. which sort of led me to the second half of the observation. Uh, not only does the universe have this preference for novelty, but each acceleration into novelty has proceeded more quickly than the ones which, which preceded it. So, for instance, the slow cooling out of the universe led to the slightly more rapid appearance of organic chemistry, which led to the quite rapid evolution of higher plants and animals, oh, yes. which led to the hysterical pace of, of human history. And I see no reason to suppose that that process of acceleration will ever slow down. Uh, uh, is it, is it uh, Terence, a linear process or a... Uh uh, an accelerating, exponentially accelerating process. It's an exponentially accelerating process, which Whoa. leads to a kind of end-of-the-world scenario that has made a lot of people place me out with the squirrels, because I'm saying that this process of novelty is now moving so quickly mm -hmm. that within our own lifetime, uh, it is going to accelerate essentially to such uh, an intensity that we will be experiencing more novelty in a few weeks or days than we've previously experienced in the whole life of the cosmos. My God, you have described uh, precisely what I have just written about called, uh, I wrote a book called The Quickening. And uh, someone showed me your book and I said, this is in Atlanta, I saw it, and, and I said, yes, the, this guy is on to this. Uh, I'm on to it uh, from, I guess, more of a pedestrian perspective than yourself after listening uh, uh, to your first half hour, Terrence, but we're talking about, uh, it suddenly dawned on me, exactly, precisely the same thing. I've been doing this talk radio program for about 13 years, you know, the all-night show. Right. And I am a uh, trained observer of events and people. And every night I've had to watch the news and dissect what is going on in our world to prepare to do this program. And in that 13 years, unmistakably, socially, economically, politically, environmentally, you name it, uh, we can talk about it. In every one of those areas of human endeavor, things are beginning to accelerate. There is simply no question about it. And that sounds exactly uh, what uh, to be the same thing you're, you're uh, uh, proposing uh, here. Yes, where, where I've gone further than most people is a lot of people have noticed this the time is speeding up phenomenon, but mm -hmm. they tend to give credit to science or media or something like that. that that's, that's right. Yes, well, what I'm saying is this is built into the laws of physics. Oh, I think, I think you're right. Terrence, we're at the bottom of the hour. I think you're exactly right, Terrence. Uh, stay right where you are. Oh, interesting, very interesting. Terrence McKenna from the Big Island of Hawaii is my guest. I'm Art Bell, and this is CBC. 97, it's Art and his guest, the late Terrence McKenna. And now, enjoy this on gold hour on the best of Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. From May of 1997, it's Art and his guest, the late Terrence McKenna. And now, enjoy this encore presentation of Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. We have a, a very, very interesting fellow on the line. His name is Terrence McKenna. And he's from the Big Island of Hawaii. And he has just described to me, uh, in uh, language that you had to listen very carefully to, 
exactly what I wrote about. The quickening. And, and we'll pick up on that in a moment. It's fascinating. My God, it's like hearing my own theory amplified, uh, coming back at me or an explanation of what I wrote about. Wow. 